Welcome to the Nook on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve, as always. I'm here today with Christy in her little lounge chair. <laughs> Mike. Yo. Matt. Yo. And John. Howdy. <laughs> and I am drinking... What am I drinking? What is it? The suspense is Dawn coming. of the Red. Dawn of the Red. I bought it because of the name, and I couldn't even think of it. I thought it was right, right. Japanese, but I got educated <laughs> earlier. It's Oregonian. Let me go fix something real quick. What's that, Ninkazi? Yeah. Yeah, it's by Ninkazi. Ninkazi is actually Sumerian. He, Ninkazi was the Sumerian god of beer. Oh, really? man. Really? Yeah. I got double educated. <laughs> That's interesting. There we go. But it's only fitting that somebody has a god of beer, right? This is a India-style radio. Yep. Delicious. Actually, I discovered that when I was thinking of new names for dog. Uh, hey. Another brewery. Yes. It's a good name for a dog, Ninkazi. Mm. <laughs> that is a good. That name. is a good yeah, name. That is a good name. Jingus yeah. <laughs> Change his name again. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna have to, <laughs> I forgot to introduce. Been through, yeah, he's been again. through three names now. So. <laughs> we call him Nin. 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 Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. Uh, not as red as I would think a red ale would be. Red though. Nah. From here, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe Orange-ish, amber. Golden amber. Yeah. yeah, amber is good. Amber can look like red, right? To India it's style red ale, so it's supposed to be really hoppy. Thank you, it's it's decently hop. I like it. Drinking the same stuff here. It's pretty clear too. <coughs> Not too cloudy. My brewed beverage of choice is kombucha. I'll just insert that uh, ginger aid this time. Nice. The ginger one's pretty damn good, yeah. yeah available at Costco now. I like now. ginger. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So you can get a case of that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice. However, I got to tell you, the, the Master Brew, which is a newer one, that I, they have a ginger one. And that thing is re I mean, it's got a lot of bite on the backside, ginger burn. It's really mm-hmm. awesome. It's that like a, really good. a really spicy brew. It's pretty good. It's really good. I love ginger. What are you drinking today, Mike? Um, I am drinking pie, uh, golden ale. Uh, pie? Pie. P-I as in, yeah, no, there's as no there's no apple pie in here, no, no lemon... Meringue pie, none of that, but pie is in the mathematical little symbol that, you know, uh, a Greek came up with for at one day. point or another. Yes. For you the, think? For the day. It's no, not the stone enjoyed by pie. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, I uh, drank that the other day. That was pretty good. No? Yeah? Yes. Enjoyed by pie? Yes. It was similar three, to the other drone. Three, us. fourteen, fifteen. I have to bug over there. Maybe you pick it up. It's ah, a little seasonal 3. stuff. Three point four one five. Oh shit! I didn't even realize the whole consequence of this. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Dude? It's coming. I don't know. Perhaps that's the end of the world. Maybe it wasn't twenty twenty one. It's. Uh, it's a. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, I'm not tripping. Nope. <laughs> what do you think it was named "Enjoy by Pie" for? Well, three point one four. I th- I figured. Okay, that's. Not, I didn't think it out fully. <laughs> didn't analyze the whole consequences of it all. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Think about this. At nine, let's see, nine twenty-six and twenty-three seconds. Is that right? Is that right? Uh, we'll Wait, we'll do the math later. Two, Where six, are we? Five, Close to three, down there, five. <laughs> what happens then? He's talking about. On that, <laughs> he's talking about seconds. on that day um, at that time. The pi number will be accurate. I believe is what he's more accurate. Say. I, at that point, like I will the be. Because pi, pi is 3.141515926533. That, that, that ma- yeah, remind me to manufacture. So at 926 and 53 seconds. I should bake a pie at that Which time. Which pie? That. pie. Just kidding. <laughs> no, I was, I was going to like re- manufacture myself a very secure tinfoil hat at that point. Yeah. So I think that would be the safest thing to do on that particular so. time and day. I thought we were talking about, like, you know, cream cheese pie or something. Oh, dude, <laughs> they make cream cheese pie? That sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right. called... Mm-hmm. You want that cup here? Cheesecake. Cream cheese what? <laughs> they make cheesecake pie. Oh, a cheesecake pie. <laughs> it's 
called cheesecake. Cheesecake is more of a pie anyway, isn't it? It, no. it really is. Why do they call it a cake if it's more of a pie? <laughs> this is what our podcast is about. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're wondering what the topic was, cakes yeah, and yeah. Pies. <laughs> Chocolate cream. Cakes and pies, cakes and pies. Cakes and pies. Or are we really using that to Somehow draw your attention Somehow I think in? if we title the podcast Cakes and Pies, all of a sudden we're going to get like 15,000 views on this one. <laughs> I think it might not be such a bad idea to do a show on Cakes and Pies. You could call it Punch and Pie or something. <laughs> baby, baby Turtle Cakes and Pies. Baby Turtles Cakes and Pies, yes. That might get PETA after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we could add some propaganda in there. It's still a Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll run the gambit, you know. Propaganda, right? Is that that was the idea? Yes. Okay. Propaganda. Propaganda. That's what we're doing. Are we propaganda? Are we being propagandized? And what can you do to stop it? Baby turtles. <laughs> baby turtles. Or you will die. That's right. <laughs> if we mention baby turtles enough, we can put it in the title, right? I mean, it's a, it won't be. Who's too... gonna say anything? Yeah, I know. I'm just supposed to just say it. Nothing doesn't matter. Anybody who's ever watched Fox News. <laughs> has probably recognized some propaganda at some time in their life. That's it, podcast title. <laughs> propaganda and baby turtles because it's propaganda to like, you know, deception to get you to watch it if or it's at least confirmation bias. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, propaganda technically is just appealing to emotion. So whether yeah. it's true or not is irrelevant. True. Right. It's marketing. Yeah. Uh, wasn't it like it's marketing with a an intent to um, deceive? It has a it has an evil connotation. It, it does, be, yeah. Only because the way it's been used, right? <laughs> and uh, throughout you know all of human history. But before <laughs> before World War Two, here's the interesting thing. Uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, told me this a while back. Before World War II, in a lot of companies, their marketing department was called the propaganda department. Absolutely, it wasn't yeah. until Bernays, after, uh, yeah, after it wasn't Bernays. until after World War II where they're like propaganda. Maybe we should not use that word. Right. <laughs> then it was associated sort of with like murder. The, the <laughs> war department was called what it was. Yeah, so yeah. The war <laughs> department was called what it was. Now it's the defense department because yeah. there's the biggest propaganda piece out there, right? The defense department. Yeah. What is it, Newspeak? Newspeak, yes. yes Anybody yes. who's ever read 1984, and if you have not read 1984 and you are watching this podcast, go read 1984. I've not read 1984. Required reading. Well, Christy, we know what you're doing this weekend. <laughs> so, we're, 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 so we're black bag. You're out of the podcast. Go on, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, though. Propaganda is precisely why you should read more than you watch videos like this. <laughs> watch this video and watch our other videos. Not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but you should be reading more seriously because well, we could tell you whatever the fuck well, we want to tell you, and there's no way for you to check up on us. But if it's written down, you can check sources, and it builds your uh, your reasoning skills for picking up bullshit. Hmm. So that's why I think I think that's a real problem in the liberty movement today is that <laughs> so many people have been educated by Stefan Molyneux videos and Larkin Rose videos and podcasts and stuff, which is, there's nothing wrong with those. Yeah, they are useful As long for as sure, you're yeah. grounded in... Yeah, but, but what's the difference between a book or a video? It's still, I mean, what... Somebody says in the video could be written in a book. It's you have to well, you have to put your filter on everything you put through your. But when it's written videos. down, you can check it. You, you have you can reference video. it. You can look it on video. You can, they can reference everything. How, how many we say how many here. times have you referenced what you've said on this on this how podcast? How many times do I reference what I what's read in a book? I mean, I, I check don't. references all I the don't. time. When anything that looks fishy, I check a reference. Okay, but I could do I that check on the video reference because I've. Because, you know, they can put a reference at the bottom, too, and it's just a link to other bullshit. I've seen that so many times, especially with with uh, Natural News. I hate that that website. Agreed. So many people Don't post about Agreed. Natural News. Uh, Even when I agree with what they're saying, I'm like, but Natural News, really? <laughs> because, uh, you know, so many times you, you check the references, and it's just a reference to another another blog of... Opinion. 
And it's not actually, it doesn't re actually reference it. It never, I rarely have found a natural news article that's actually based on scientific evidence. So, uh, sourced by, sourced by uh, tinfoil hat page at wordpress.com. So, yeah, I know what you're exactly. talking about. Yeah, so it's, maybe you know. what's really important, with even with propaganda, with anything we read, is to check references. I mean, that may be something that is that we need to put more into. Even watching videos, check references. You know, have that in, as a context for a, a filter. You know, don't believe everything you say and hear. That's one of the things that kind of bugs me about Bad Quaker, too. Mm. Ben Stone is terrible at putting in references. Which and is? which, which I, I like what he does. I like what you do, Ben Stone, if you're watching. Yeah, agreed. Very, very good, very good dude. I can't say what Ben Stone said when I'm trying to reference your stuff, you know? Yeah, I think, I think we've mentioned it before. It's, uh, uh, and we, I, at least me and you see, we, we talked about it, and we haven't seen it referenced anywhere else. And we want to believe that uh, Ben Stone's right about it, but unfortunately we can't find it cited anywhere else, and it's the thing about the first... Uh, the first government being, you know, uh, bandits for outside, of, outside of Jericho. I mean, it sounds legit, pretty damn plausible too. But never been able to find uh, another another uh, right. source for it. So, yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, I mean, I believe it, but believing doesn't necessarily mean it's real, though. So, yeah, yeah that's what uh, Corbett, James Corbett, and Richard Andrew Grove are really good at is yeah. is providing. Uh, Sources and especially uh, Corbett because he's so pro uh, prolific weekly with the World News Today. What, I'm gonna put you the name of your show, sorry, man. But yeah, they publish sources all the time, so you can go in and uh, ferret through what what they've their analysis and see if that's uh, you know congruent with your own. I, I think it's also important to acknowledge that you should be able to. Uh, Entertain an idea without accepting it as your own. It's totally important. And in Aristotle, of course. That does, yeah, I was just. I, uh, I'd like to, you know. The mark of an intelligent person. Observe yeah. a lots of things and not look, take them all with a grain of salt. And, you know, there's got to be a pattern there if you hear a lot of them or you. So it's more the patterning. Some you people are with that too, though. Because you'll find a lot of times when you hear the same thing over and over again, That's true. it turns That's out true. that their it's source really, is all the yeah. same yeah, thing, right. which is That's bullshit. True. That's true. <laughs> yeah, right. so, sometimes you yeah. do get you get involved in like an echo chamber sort of a thing. Like, well, I've heard this a whole lot. Uh, so how is it that so many people could possibly all say this and have it not be I mean, true? But that's just look at all the media, different networks included, like that Conan skit where he ha they have. Uh, dozens of different media repeating the exact same phrase. Yeah. Uh, Everybody it, to your own no, corners. Right. That is, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, yeah. It, it, it just shows no matter what network you're looking at, it's it's most likely paid for by the same people, you know, especially the major media, like the, the mainstream media, as people call it. Well, that's why it's good, I think, to go to the, the sources where you know their agenda, for instance, anti-war. They're completely open. You know what you're getting. You know, exactly. you know. You go to, in the case, I'll say James Corbett again. He's an open anarchist. You know what you're getting. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think that's why it's so important to put yourself in the position of who's writing the article. Well, what are they trying to get across, and what are they likely hiding? Right. Yeah. You know, from their position, what would they not like to cover about this? That's likely. And it, and it is good to good to remember. Uh, I I've thought about this uh, quite a bit that you know whether whether you agree with the writer's opinion or not does not necessarily mean that what source they're citing is is biased in itself or what they're talking about is unfactual. You know, or not unfactual. Right. The, the whatever well, unfactual. That's a weird word for me to say. Um, <laughs> not true, not true, unfactual. I'm, I, untrue. I, 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 maybe I'll make that a word, non-true. Yeah. Uh, but, um, like unfactual. That unfactual, uh, just, just, you know, not that's a little bit of new speak right there. Just make it simpler, add a prefix to it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like that website, disinfo.org or something like that. I never know whether to actually trust it or not. <laughs> <laughs> 
dun, yeah, dun, there's dun. a lot of those where it says straight up at the bottom that everything on here is bullshit. So anytime they put a disclaimer that everything on there is bullshit, it pretty much... I'm not going to believe anything on The it. Onion, The Current. There's yeah. a lot of websites like that. It's, Daily it's Mail. A, Sometimes those are more close to real life. Than oh, the, well, yeah, that's... The, that, that's yeah. That is well, another the best, good point. The best lie has a cre- yeah. kernel of truth in it. Yeah, yeah I remember they did uh, 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 like an Onion Radio News one where it's all uh, like... Uh, Today, the CIA has released a press release saying about how much easier Facebook has made their job. <laughs> you know, like, you know, it's some CIA agent. He goes, it's so easy right now. Everybody puts exactly where they are all the time. Their favorite movies, their favorite TV shows. I don't have to do anything. You know? Friends, networks, all that, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, that, that's another point. Uh, fictional uh, media can even be almost journalistic. <laughs> yeah. when, when you're writing a story about something that's paralleling real life, you, you could be exposing something. But I think it is I, wiser at that point to just straight up expose it. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think I read recently that so many of the younger age bracket gets the news from the Daily Show than anywhere else. Yeah, for yeah. <laughs> Which he's, uh, he's retiring as far yeah. as I heard. Yeah. yeah. To, uh, to, I think it's important to, to come to terms with well, first, are we being propagandized, right? So we've talked a little bit about that, but I think that we can actually look, uh, look at it empirically and say, in my opinion, yes, we're absolutely getting oh, yeah. <laughs> propagandized. And you can go back to, I think it's around. What 19, happened to 19, Ebola? 19, yeah, 1908. <laughs> yeah, Ebola. Like the Ebola's are ever since that. 1908, I think it is. Government there's fixed a, it. There are about Morgan and others. Yeah. They got together and purchased the, the top 25 a, papers. There was in the a country. guy, I, I remember, I can't think of his name. Um, Richard Andrew Grove talks about it. Uh, he basically invented propaganda, the, mod, the modern use of propaganda. Bernays. Bernays, yeah. yeah. So he's a, with the nephew of Freud. So he had a, a strong right. background, and he had, he had his uncle's ear, you know, he had a mm. strong background in the psyche. Yeah, so, but, so you have the purchase of the most influential papers back around, you know, 1908 or something like that. And then uh, pretty close to the same era, the uh, Rockefellers wanted to. Uh, they approached the Beards, which is a married couple, and they were like the top in the uh, uh, American Historical Society at the time. And they said, basically asked them, you know, if they would be amenable to tweaking the curriculum so that it showed a positive light on war. Because they had already determined mm-hmm. in a think tank, basically, the, quick, the easiest way to, to steer population is through war. And another thing they Which did. goes to chapter three of... of, of we were just on 1984. The purpose of war is not right. to win, right? Anyway, but yeah, so um, yeah, so it, the beard said no. So what did they do? Is they went and got 17 bright guys that they liked, basically sent them to Oxford, you know, and those 17 become the nucleus of the American Historical Society, and history is forever rewritten. Hmm. Yeah. So around the same time, didn't they also stir up a? Uh, a panic in the banking industry around 1907, I think it was. Yeah, M- Morgan, uh, he, he for the, pretty much bailed out the, for the Federal right, Reserve. Right, right, right. Uh, what did they do? Because you guys were talking about this earlier. They caused, they they caused a, a crisis, panic. And then what happened? Yeah, they, they caused a panic, and then the you know they, they propose a solution, mm-hmm. and then they implement their own solution. So it's easier for Problem people to solution. take yeah. the yeah, solution, yeah. Mm-hmm. take the, yeah, because they caused well, the if crisis you, for, before. First you come up with what you want to get done, and then they cause a panic. And you're the one who provides the solution. They all look to you because you're the first one with the solution. So, and they're doing that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They do it right. all the time. Well, right. propaganda is all about psychological conditioning. I remember I wrote a paper recent, uh, a couple of years ago about how people aren't actually conditioned for killing other people. Uh, nowhere in, in, in nature will you find... Animals killing their own kind. Chimpanzees do that on a giant scale. Not on a giant scale. That's true. Okay, <laughs> that is true. And how they get people to kill each other. As a matter of fact, in up until World War Two, uh, the Civil War, 
the the number of people who actually killed other people was in like the twenties. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I got them remarkably in my, low by, yeah. by yeah. modern standards. Matter of fact, they found people uh, at Gettysburg dead with multiple shots loaded into their gun because right. they would aim, they'd point and aim, pretend like they shoot, and then they'd load another bullet so they wouldn't have to kill other people. And to, to double down on that notion, right, look throughout time, look at what war does to the minds of man. We're not made for that. We're not... PTSD. So it, it's an argument, yeah. Yeah. A, a, a very strong argument against the nature of man being so violent, right? Governments, the states, have had to go through extreme extremes to condition man to be able to kill someone else yep. right so it's not our not you know it's a they have to dehumanize the enemy mm-hmm. um targets was a big big thing in practice rather than using round targets they changed it to silhouettes in order to condition the soldiers for killing people and that drove the number willing to kill up into the 70s but 76 percent I think by by Vietnam and into the 90s by by uh, you know desert storm and yeah I think video games had a, uh, had like an icing on the cake kind of uh, factor on that you know being could able be. to Right. Did they implement those? Was that something that there was? No, the army did. did the, the, the army did come out yeah. with a America's uh, Army. Yeah. I remember that game. That game sucked ass, by the way. <laughs> wait, wait. When, when did that <laughs> one come out? Apparently, I missed game. that one. So I don't know the if you read. Uh, Steve, oh yeah, I do. Okay. Paul right. Kachel Bell's book, The End of War. He has three books. Yes. Right. And yeah. so yeah, you're you're. So I remember these from I think The End of War. Uh, excellent book for any of the viewers. Uh, Paul Chappelle. He's in Santa Barbara. Uh, nuclear age peace, something like that. But he's a army veteran. It's a good book. Yeah. And then there's a uh, mockingbird. We spoke a little bit about mockingbird earlier. Uh, that's uh, Operation Mockingbird. Yeah, you can see oh, the, you yeah. can see the video testimonies there. I think it's the deputy director of the CIA was getting questioned by uh, some Congress members and. They asked them, you can see YouTube this and you can see it, but he, they were asked if, uh, if the CIA had anybody planted in the printed media. And he'd asked, already answered a bunch of questions, yes, no, directly. And then when he got here, he said that that question was better entertained uh, in closed session. And then asked, <laughs> uh, they asked the same better question about Hollywood. Question nobody else is here. And then this, uh, the, uh, the same question in reference to the news media, like television media, and his response was always we should entertain this question in closed session so you got an take from that what you will that reminds me of something interesting that i i, I feel it never got resolved mm. uh, remember the woman who got up in front of congress and she went on ranting about something and then when they covered it on the news yeah they only played the audio from the hallway yeah and they had dubbed it over the audio she had played yeah whatever she had actually said was that years. that was last year getting so. on towards last year at one least. or two years at most yeah what was this about yeah, no. no one knows because <laughs> exactly <laughs> nobody knows because the, the the odd thing was she had got she got up in front of congress and uh yeah, disrupted ha- the whole thing and house started, of representatives she was a secretary started ranting about and something and they like detained her and as she was leaving that she she said some more stuff in the hallway be- while she's getting to an elevator. Yeah, there's which an is, elevator yeah. ding in the audio. That's yeah. how you know it's from the hallway. Yeah. And they played the audio from the hallway as if it was what she had played from, she had said on the uh, plat, like the, the podium or whatever you call it. Hmm. So for some reason, that ne- as far as I knew, I don't know if someone out there knows, as far as I know, they never actually played the audio from what she said to, she got up there and said. Yeah. Which I feel like is much more important than whatever she ranted about in the hallway. Yeah, it probably. Could have been bullshit, yeah. But. I remember during the 90s when I f- first came to this realization that that government's lying to us. Because I grew up in a household that was very pro government, pro war, uh, and very authoritarian. And I remember. Uh, it was during the Monica Lewinsky scandal and everything like that. Every time something new came out that 
that Clinton had done, he would bomb someplace new, and the <laughs> yeah, news would be all right. about <laughs> the, thi- the the new place that, that Clinton was bombing. And, my, and I remember, and I was a kid at the time, I remember looking at that and going, how does nobody see the connection between these two things? Yeah, there was a, wasn't that like the whole wag, concept? Wag the like, dog. yeah, concept wag between, the, yeah, wag the dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? Uh, yeah. And, uh, I wish yeah. I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> and then they continue to do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's way, everybody's yeah. looked into Anderson Cooper, but he's a, a graduate of a CIA foreign area yes. officer program, right? Yeah. And so. And then who's that? Who's that other guy from ABC? I think NB- NBC. Brian Williams. Brian Williams. Yeah. And then William Buckley has strong. There's strong evidence for. You know, he's dead now, but uh, for how many years was he spouting off? You know. Really. William, yeah, William Buckley. Has, and what uh, was he? He was a. Uh, what do you call paleo conservative? Uh, he's a conservative uh, uh, personality, you know. But he has a like American royalty kind of look down as you on his nose and talk, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, b- born and raised in America, and for some reason has like British yeah <laughs> British yeah, accent, right, or, yeah, yeah. or he sounds like an imperial or something. Right, You're yeah. like, mm. hey, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to get deep into the whole 9/11 conspiracy, but yeah, that could, how that many of you have seen that video of the newscaster talking about how Building Seven, building seven, seven had fallen already? and <laughs> Building Seven is in the background? Right. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be really funny if she had realized that and like put her hand up to like fix her hair or something like yeah it's gone <laughs> yeah that was like 20 minutes early yeah, right i think that's that what it was it's like yeah, yeah she's saying 20 minutes early that building seven just fell and it's standing proud behind her you know? yeah like right behind her like your okay, left shoulder somebody and... jumped the gun yeah. <laughs> that's the funniest thing it's not even like oh it's like way back there it's like her head's here and it's like right there you know like it's just what's hilarious but oh oh but uh, uh. The, other, the other issue is like local media versus uh, in, like international or national or whatever media. I feel like there's not really much local media going on, at least from where we are. Uh, yeah, it's co- it, it's copy paste to whatever you know the no, like the network the network APA. proceeding. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, or the Associated Press wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's almost impossible to get a journal out journalist out to anywhere now. Like, that, and that ties well, into when like you, what when you, you kill them off whenever they speak up. Yeah, that that's happened a couple times. Right, uh, uh, Michael Hastings is one. Yeah, yeah. Michael yeah, so, Hastings. But that ties in directly to like right. your last point, or like, what do you do about it, right? And uh, uh, I think I heard it. What did I hear it very recently? Example was somebody in a their local community wrote a piece for their local paper about fluoridating water, and the, the media actually ran it. Huh. So it's sort of like to speak to what Andrew Grove talks about, Richard Andrew Grove talks about, it's be the media. You know, I was just going to say boutique media. Yeah, it's like the media. all of us are, you know, anybody who can write and is a journalist should be out there. I think maybe a, 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 a new local, telling stories. Hmm? local media. I don't know if uh, paper is the best way to do so, but some sort of local media that as some actual journalists would be nice. And if you're going to write, like, you know, like some sort of lead into a newspaper or, like, a major website or something like that, mm-hmm. you, there's that, too. Um, <laughs> if Christy you, wants to put... To plug her. Bemuseme.com. Yeah, she's. Go to Bemuseme.com. That's it. not so much news, though, as, well, as it's an outlet it's for it's an outlet. creativity. Right. Yeah. Well, it could be an it could outlet be for writing, which is creativity. It's, yeah. But, you know, what was I go, uh, going with that? Something about, we were saying, uh, Building 7, da 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 We went past Yeah, we were way past Did you lose your place? I did. I really lost <laughs> it. Yeah. Building 7. Yeah. That's the, that's the. So, oh, so oh, yeah, oh, yeah. One. It helps if you write the story for them. It's ah, really yes, weird yes, newspapers. Like and newspapers yeah. and yeah, the. It's like you think like you know you want to think that there's a guy with like a hat on and like there's a fedora not. and a thing that says press, press on it. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have a mouse there on and a typewriter. And they're good yeah, at nobody's and paste. doing a damn thing all day. But you send them a story that's already written. All of a sudden, it's going to end up in the paper. If you if you're really that, thinking that was paper one thing that thing. I was always yeah. really uh, adamant about when people when the media would contact me, mm-hmm. mostly for the checkpoint stuff. Yeah. But I always gave them a few sentences, that's it. N- nothing that they could distort. You want to yeah. be careful about when you give them stuff, make it so they cannot distort it. Yeah. Which is not easy. It's usually got to be a, a concise amount of information. But, uh... So do how you, do you think they could spin the whole idea of... Through robots. Robot prostitutes. Hmm. 
Do you think they could use some sort of propaganda to like make it seem like it's robo a bad sexuality? Thing. <laughs> or use the robots in propaganda? Do you th- do you think oh. robots will be good or bad? For robot Well, propaganda. when you're having sex with them, uh, maybe hold on, hold on, guys. We're, <laughs> this is we're, we're out of time. Oh. We can't talk about it. Damn. Especially with our sweet new intro. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you to uh, Modem from Hell or yes. Modem to Hell. What's modem to Hell for the for the song on our intro, by the way. Ah. Yes. I hope everybody likes it. The song yes. is called Carruthers. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what? Um, or do I don't really care. Noma and Brian are doing their undocumented human tour with their son. They're going around. Uh, right. Uh, Even uh, though they're not coming down here. Oh, uh, yeah. missed them. But uh, and then I guess what they're ended up at like the Texas Bitcoin conference is that what it is? I don't uh, that's know. why I hear uh, in Austin, I think. Road trip on Bitcoin, yeah. Woo! And then they're also heading up to L.A. and Santa Monica, I think. So, good, time. good luck to you guys, and everybody else, have a good night. Peace out. Good Cheers. Night.